All right, hey everyone, how's it going? Um, today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at some exponent questions from the ACT. Um, and I'm gonna show you multiple ways that you can kind of approach some of these problems uh, by using various strategies. And also I'm gonna show you what the actual rule is. So let's take a look at this first question here. It says, which of the following is equivalent to three X to the fourth raised to the third? Now, obviously, if you know the rule, it's gonna be much faster to always use the rule. However, let's say you don't remember the rule. On the ACT, you want to keep in mind that substitution method, where you can just sub in a value for the variable. So here, say I couldn't remember the rule. I could just sub in something like x is 2 into this expression, and I'm just going to go ahead and type that right in my calculator. So why don't I pull up my calculator here, and uh, let's literally just kind of type this in. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to type in parentheses, uh, 3 times 2, I'm replacing the x with 2, raised to the 4th, close my parentheses, and we're raising that whole thing to the 3rd. Okay, so that comes out to be 110,592. Now, the substitution method says all you need to do is once you come up with an answer, just match that answer here. So if I went to a, 3 times 2 raised to the 7th, putting back in the x is 2, not the same thing, can't be that. Uh, B, 3 times 2 raised to the 12, we can also see is not the same thing. Uh, C, 9 times 2 raised to the 7, um, still not the same thing. 27 times 2 raised to the 7, um, still not the same thing, so it better be E here, which is 27 times 2 raised to the 12. And uh, you can see we do get that 110,592, which is the same answer that we got originally, so I know it must be choice E. Now that's using the substitution method here. If you want to remember what the rule is, okay, when you have 3x to the fourth raised to the third, okay, first off, this is like a 3 to the 1. And when you're raising something to a power, you just multiply the exponents. We're going to multiply the 3 with the 1 and the 3 with the 4 here. So really, this is going to become 3 to the 3 times 1 is 3 times x to the 4 times 3 is just 12. Oh, and then 3 to the third power, 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27. So we get 27x to the 12th, which is how we're coming up with choice E here. All right, uh, let's continue on and take a look at question number 2 here. So it says, for all d that's greater than 1, the expression 5d to the 4th over 5d to the 7th equals what? Okay, well again, same thing here. If you know the rule, use the rule. But let's do this first without the rule. Okay, let's say I put in something like d is 3. I'm just making up a number here. Let's see what this expression comes out to be. So again, I can just type this into my calculator. I could say, okay, um, alpha y equals enter. You know, I'll try to keep this on the screen here. Alpha y equals enter is called the fraction. 5 times 3 raised to the 4th over 5 times 3 raised to the 7th. Okay, if I do that, I get 1 over 27. Okay, well, clearly that's not one-third, so A is going to be out. If I go to B there, negative 3 raised to the third, well, that's not going to be 1 over 27. Uh, C, 3 to the third, we know that's 27. We just did that before. Uh, D, negative alpha Y equals enter 1 over 3 to the third. You can very clearly see that comes out to be negative 1 over 27. And the only difference between D and E is this has negative, which means that E is going to be the positive 1 over 27. And there you go. So we matched our answer. Now, again, um, I'll show you the rule for this. When you're dividing, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just subtract your exponents. So first off, 5 divided by 5 is just 1. Okay, so that's just 1. And then we get 1d to the 4 minus 7, which just gives us d to the 4 minus 7 is negative 3. And according to your exponent rules, when you have a negative exponent, okay, you can convert this into a fraction by making this 1 over d to the positive third. And that's how we're coming up with choice E here. All right, let's take a look at number 3 here. It says if x, y, and z are positive integers such that x to the z is equal to a and y to the z is equal to b, then a times b is equal to what? Okay, so again, let's start by using the strategies first, and then we'll come back and explain the rules after. Now, when you are subbing in, okay, and you have equations, you have to make sure that you sub in values that make these equations true. So, for instance, why don't I make x2, um, y3, and z equal to 4? 
Okay, and we're going to solve for a and b then. So a would be 2 to the 4th power, or 16. Okay, and uh, b here is y to the z, so 3 to the 4th, which is 81. Okay, now the question wants to know, what's a times b? Well, if I took my a value times my b value here, then the answer to that, let's put that in the calculator, um, 81 times 16 is going to be 1296. Okay, so that's my answer that I want to match here. So we need to find which one of these answers matches that. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and start typing there. And make sure you type in your answer choices exactly as you see them. So if it says x times y to the z, it's 2 times 3 raised to the 4th. Okay, not 1296. If I go to b here, 2 times 3 raised to the 2 times 4. Okay, still not 1296. Uh, C, parentheses, 2 times 3, close parentheses, raised to the 4. Oh, there's 1296 right there. Uh, most likely C is going to be the answer, but you should go and just make sure that's the only one that works. Sometimes more than one will work, um, but if we go ahead and look at D here, 2 times 3, raised to the 2 times uh, 4, that clearly can't work. And if we go to E, 2 times 3, raised to the um, 4 squared, well, that's not going to work either. Okay, so the answer here is just C. That's the one that matches. Now, again, let's show how this works out um, using the actual algebra here. So A times B, A is just going to be X to the Z times B, which is Y to the Z. Okay, the reason why it's going to be choice C here, X times Y raised to the Z, is for the same reason we talked about um, in that first problem. Okay, this is like X to the 1, Y to the 1. That z gets distributed to both exponents, and you're going to multiply them together. So this is really x to the z times y to the z. It's the exact same thing, and that's why it's c here. Okay, number four, this is actually going to go back to like number two here. Um, you can use strategy for this, but way easier just to solve this one out, okay? When you're dividing um, bases that are the same, again, you just subtract the exponents. So p to the x over p to the y is just p to the x minus y which equals p to the 4. So which must be true? Well, if we already have that p is equal to p, then we know that their exponents must be equal. So x minus y has to be equal to 4. Okay, um, and number 5 here, again, um, say you forget the exponent rules, you can substitute in values here to make this true. So I could just choose like x is 2 and z is 4, and we could just go ahead and type this in. I could say, okay, 5 times 2 raised to the 3rd uh, times 4, and then that times parentheses 2 times 2 up 4 uh, times 4 squared. And if I get that answer, we can see that that's 81, 9, 20. So I just go to my answer choices. We'll start with A, uh, 2 up 7 times 4 squared. We could see that that's not the same thing if I go to B there, 10 times 2 up to the 7th times 4 raised to the 3rd. Oops, let's make sure we type this in correctly. Okay, we don't want that as another exponent, so it's 2 to the uh, 7th times 4 to the 3rd. Oh, and there you go, 80, 81,920, the exact same thing which means B is most likely our answer here. You want to just go through all the answers just to make sure that's the only one that works here. But let's explain the math so we can check it that way. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, x to the third times x to the fourth, when you're multiplying with exponents, you want to go ahead and add um, the exponents together when, they have, when you have common bases. So x to the third times x to the fourth is like x to the 3 plus 4. And then z, which is like a z to the 1 here, times a z squared becomes z to the 1 plus 2, so we get 10x to the 7th, z to the 3rd. And we can see that that's the same thing as choice b here. All right, so um, that's a little bit uh, about exponents on the ACT. A lot of them you can use these strategies for. So if you do forget the rule, try substituting in values to help you out here.